rejoice and be glad in it. If you would, stand with us, please. Sing, lift him up.
be in the pulpit today. Come on over here. Come on over here. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. We are grateful to be in the house of the Lord on today. And this is the Lord's Day, and we are glad to be here in the house of the Lord one more time. We're going to have on this our mission Sunday from now on at New Sunlight, whenever we have a call of worship and prayer. Anyone who does that, man, woman, boy, or girl, will do that from here because you are helping us lead in the worship experience. Amen. And so we're going to have our call to worship from Mrs. Janet Levi, and then I shall return with our church theme and faith affirmation, and then followed by that, we'll also have prayer by Mrs. Tiffany Washington, and then we'll have our welcome, and of course our meditation will be by Mrs. Vandell. Lockett. So let's say amen for Mrs. Levi as she comes in her own way. Amen. Church, 
following Christ by meeting the needs of others through discipleship, worship, ministry, and evangelism, and our faith affirmation for this 2022 year. We surrender to the will of God and commit to the work of the kingdom because we live and love knowing that our labor will not be in vain. Amen. You may be seated. Mrs. Washington will come now and render unto us our prayer. Amen. Would you bow your heads in a moment of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time saying thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for having us clothed in our right mind. Thank you for food, shelter. Thank you just for being you all by yourself. Lord, just thank you. I want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing me just one more day. Lord, at this time I come on behalf of our children and youth. We're asking that you crown their heads with more wisdom and knowledge from on high. We ask you to crown their heads from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Touch them in a mighty way, dear Father, so they'll know that with you all things are possible, and without you they may fail. But you are the lifter of our hands. We ask that you touch the bereaved families this morning. Touch that child who had to bury their parents on yesterday. Touch that faith, that sister who had to bury her sister on yesterday, dear Father. We ask that you just touch, touch in a mighty, mighty way, dear Father. We ask that you. Touch this congregation, those that are here and those that are not, that have the desire to be here, those that are watching through Facebook Live, just touch them, Lord. We don't know what their circumstances are. We don't know what they need at this moment. But we ask that you just touch their hearts. Give them that love, that understanding, that uncompromising touch of your mighty hand and heart. We ask that you just lead us. We ask that you touch them. Lead the, the leaders of this church, dear Father. We ask that you touch the ministers, touch the pastor, touch the, the deacons, the deaconess. Just touch us all in a mighty way, dear Father. We ask that you lift their bow down heads, touch their hearts, convict their hearts to do what only you know that we should do. Lord, that we ask that you bless the pastor and his family. Touch the word that he's going to bring forth to us today. Just lead us and guide us. Lord, I just want to say thank you just one more time. Because you allowed me just one more, one more time to be here in your service, dear Lord. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you because you've been so good. You've been mighty, mighty good. You've been a shelter in the Yeah.
meditation on this morning. Uh, for this, our fifth Sunday, it's our mission uh, Sunday, and so we invite her up as well to do the meditation uh, for today. And let's prepare our hearts and minds to receive her meditation on this, the Lord's Day. Amen. Amen. attention. 
and keep praying. Keep prayer on your daily agenda. You may be praying often, studying daily, and trying to live right, but you see no positive outcomes. James 5 and part B of verse 16 has the right idea, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. God may not show up as you expect him and the way you want him, but you should show up and meet him in the prayer room of your heart. God promises us in Isaiah 65, 24, before they call, I will answer. And while they are speaking, I will hear. God, God hears you each time you call upon him. The one thing I know for sure is when you tarry often with the Lord, you do not have to tarry long. Keep praying, my sisters and brothers. God just might be changing you in the prayer process. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mrs. Lockett. That was a tremendous meditation, and that's so powerful that God Keep praying because God might be changing you in the process. And that really is, that, that is the goal that you and I might experience. And it fits so well with what we will seek to preach on this day. That God is trying to change us in the process. And so often we come to God and we forget that after we pray for our families and our spouses and our children and our church, and we can't forget that God might be trying to speak to and do some things within each and every one of us. And so I'm grateful to these sisters. Can we encourage them again for a tremendous job on this? Amen. 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 Well, we want to enjoy the songs of praise. And so we have our minister of music and our musicians and this, our praise uh, team, choir, uh, cadre, group. Uh, crew, whatever name you want to give to them, they're going to praise God uh, with fervent praise, and then we shall prayerfully return with the word of God on today. God bless you. Let's enjoy the songs of praise at this time. Amen.
someone said in the song, he's been better than good yeah. to each one of you and to me. Yeah. Bow with me a word of prayer as we now prepare our hearts for the word of God. God, we thank you. We acknowledge that you are God. That you alone are sovereign and powerful. God, we thank you for the privilege of coming into your house one more time. Thank you for allowing us to gather in the sanctuary, not just of this building, but of your presence. Thank you, God, that you come in and inhabit the praises of your people, that you uh, come in and when we encounter your presence, that we encounter a presence and a power that has life-changing impact. We thank you for those who are visiting. We pray that you bless them in a special way. And we pray for this church, that our members, that our those who are active in our church, that all of us would grow in maturity and discipleship, that we might have an impact not only within but beyond the stained glass windows of this great edifice. And now we thank you for this privilege of worship. We worship in song and praise. We render prayer unto you and we shall worship in giving before it's all over. But right now we're asking for a word. I'm asking, oh God, that you would bring clarity to my thoughts, organization to everything that is necessary for my remembrance, that my convictions might go forth in such a way that someone else might be convinced, compelled, comforted, and challenged to put faith in Jesus Christ. Let your voice be heard when my voice is heard, and let your word be in my mouth as it already is in my mind and heart. Let your spirit govern and guide us right now that we might have a fresh encounter of your presence. Thank you for an atmosphere of worship. Thank you for an atmosphere of expectation. Bless expectant hearts. Open closed minds. Give us all the enabling power that only you can provide. That when it's all over, someone can walk out better, stronger, more mature and encouraged than they walked in. This is our prayer and we believe it with great conviction. And all who agree with me and believe, would you say in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Stand with me for the reading of God's word. Those who are physically able, if you would. We understand if you cannot stand with me those who can for the reading of God's word I'm going to invite you to the gospel of John chapter 5 the familiar story you will find in John chapter 5 John's gospel chapter 5 in our New Testament thankful for each and every one of you who are here in person and we thank God for those who are watching and listening virtually. We thank God for each and every one of you all. New Sunlight Baptist Church family and extended visitors, friends, we thank God for you. John 5, I'm going to miss verse 1. John 5, starting with verse 1. I'm reading from the New International Version, but whatever you have in your hand or on your device, please follow along. It says, sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five color covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there one who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition <clears throat> for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? My, my. Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool. When the 
water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once, the man was cured, picked up his mat, and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. So the Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed, it is the Sabbath, the law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away to the crowd that was there. Later, verse 14 says, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. And finally, verse 15, the man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who made him well. Amen. You may be seated in the very presence of our God. We have been in series, and today is the culmination of that series. On this day, we are concluding this month-long series entitled Effective Immediately, where we have been going through and examining that we might be able to exhibit the characteristics of a committed church. So we dealt with availability what it means to be individually and collectively as the body of Christ available for God to use. That, that we need to effective immediately in 2022 be available. But then we dealt with in the second week uh, the, the importance of being identifiable. That our identity in Christ is effective immediately. That you don't have to wait two months or two weeks but the moment you put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the moment you affirm in your heart, in your mind, and that you are openly willing to affirm to others that you believe Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of all of humanity, for those who believe in him, is your Savior and personally your Lord, then effective immediately, you are now identifiable as a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then thirdly, we dealt with what it means to be accountable. Because it's not just good enough to be available or identifiable, but we have to be accountable to the Lord. And so we, we dealt with what it means to, to have a sense of responsibility and a sense of obligation. That, that God is holding each and every one of us accountable to His will and His way. Today we culminate this series and today we talk about what it means to be intentional. That we, if we're not careful, can begin to just drift through life. And we're going to talk about this more, but with all that has taken place in not only our city and our state and our region of the Gulf Coast, but what has taken place globally over the last couple of years can leave you, if you're not careful and conscious and, and alert and aware, and as some of us are claiming today, woke enough. But some of us are woke regarding everything except the Lord. Wish you all help me. We got some woke sisters and brothers walking around, and some of them are woke and still blind to what God might have in store. And I, I'm all for being woke, so don't get it twisted now. I'm, I'm all for being woke, but I, I want you to walk with God while you woke too. And my prayer is that you would be woke and walk with God. Because you can be woke, but not walking with God if you are misguided in some of your approach. So today we're going to deal with what it means to be intentional, strategic. What does it mean to, to participate every day in your own transformation? What does it mean collectively as a church to be willing to participate again after we've dealt with all that we've dealt with and are still dealing with? 
we still have a variant. And we have another one. And, and we may have another one. And we're going to have these ongoing, lingering challenges. And yet, in the midst of it all, are we intentional about ministering for the kingdom of God in the midst of everything else that places limitations and provides a new norm on how we can live? Because God has not asked us to cure COVID. Now, he might enable someone, as he already has, with a, he's, he's already enabled the minds of those who have, have come up with the vaccine. You do understand that God gave us minds. And that it was in his grace and providence that, that, in, uh, that particularly uh, uh, persons who were instrumental in that, uh, many of them look like you and I. So we've got white brothers and sisters, we've got black folk, white folk, and, and other people of different uh, uh, hues and heritage who have all been instrumental in the last couple of years. So that, so that no one can be left out of the process and of the appreciation for what God is capable of enabling people to do. Even if they don't know that God is the one that gave them the ability in the first place. So today we want to discuss as a church for us individually and collectively what does it look like for us to be intentional to decide we're going to live on purpose so today's title for the sermon is get well soon the man walked away saying it was Jesus who told me to get up and pick up my mat and walk and this man said in verse 15, he said, it was Jesus who had made him well. Tell somebody, get well soon. I researched Hallmark. And when I researched Hallmark Chairman, Discovered based on research I acquired, and the numbers could be somewhat off given that we were, we're in a new year now, things are in flux economically, socially, politically, and otherwise. But there's a ballpark figure on the internet that estimates that in addition to the 27,000 member workforce that Hallmark has globally, that there is approximately three and a half, brother, billion dollars of revenue annually for all of our cars. Mm. Good to see you all back here. I've got good to see Sister Katrina up there. We've got some new faces mixed in. That's awesome. That's, that's, I like that. I'm excited about that. Three and a half billion dollars every year. Revenue is spent on Hallmark cards. Three and a half billion dollars that Prescott is spent on telling somebody congratulations on your graduation. Three and a half billion dollars that you is spent yeah. to say thank you. Three and a half billion dollars since Julius spent saying my condolences. God be with you. But the one that really got my attention was when I thought about the fact that three and a half billion dollars, Brother Heath, is also spent telling somebody, get well soon. All right. All right. All right. All right. Mrs. Williams, get well soon. Three and a half billion dollars to tell somebody you're praying for them and you hope, my sister, my brother, that you get well. Soon. Mrs. Coleman, I thought about that. Thought about the fact that our churches, not just through summer, but our churches collectively, any church over in the name of Jesus Christ, has had to deal with, large or small, the reality that we might be afflicted by more than just COVID. You walk a bit today. We'll get to where we need to get to in Jesus' name. 
Then God, it, 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 it dawned on me that we're not only dealing, church, with the afflictions that ail our bodies. But we are in 2022 in the church battling against the afflictions of our spirits. Because you don't have to have COVID to be afflicted in your spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Bible says hope deferred too long makes the heart sick. Some of us, many of us have never had hope. And yet some of us whose bodies have not experienced the excruciating strain of a harking cough and a fever and and exhaustion and fatigue and sweats and aches and pains have had some other pain. You ought to help me preach if you understand what I'm talking about. Everybody in here has had some pain in the last couple of years. Whether it was the pain of watching or coming back to see that the house you put money into and it spent your whole life building had been washed away. Just like that. Or the pain of, of watching somebody you love go to the hospital and they tell you that you can't even go in and see them. Mercy. That's, that's painful. Watching kids be on the brink of nervous breakdown because suddenly they're thrust into the trauma of being on the road for several hours. And then coming back to find out that you don't have school in the classroom, so you're going to do it at home. And then when you get at home, you've got a computer screen to look at all day long. In fourth and fifth and sixth grade. I'm talking about real pain that all of us in here, whether you are a man or woman, black or white, gay or straight, elder or younger, we've all had something that has afflicted us, that has brought us hardship and challenge. And on the day when you look in this text, you see a man. That I want to submit was afflicted by more than just the absence of strength and vitality in his limbs. You see, John's gospel, to take a step back, is about understanding that there is substance attached to the signs and the symbols that the Savior showcased. In other words, Jesus, unlike Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which, which, which provides for us the synoptic gospels, which means they generally, though they were distinct and unique in and of themselves, they still had an overarching uh, vantage point. They have an overarching point of view. They were synoptic. They were similar. They, they all had an angle on Jesus that, that by and large was, was horizontal. Matthew came along, his gospel, to, to showcase that, that Jesus uh, was the true fulfillment of everything that the Old Testament tried to predict and foreshadow. That Jesus was the true Messiah, that, that he embodied everything that, that they tried to learn in their Hebrew heritage. And, and, and Mark came along to, to showcase that that the, the, the true uh, servant is the one who also possessed sovereign power. Because in a Roman ruled society, Mark's gospel fast forwards, doesn't even deal with baptism, but goes right into the ministry of Jesus because it says, think only goes that the one came to serve and not be served. That he might save the law. And then you go into Luke's gospel. And Luke comes along as a physician. And 
it gives this very detailed and sophisticated account of, of Jesus' miraculous ministries to showcase that regardless of who you are in society and regardless of what your status was, man or woman, rich or poor, child, it did not matter, that everybody was welcome because the Son of Man had come. But John shifts. John, Elijah, he points us upward in a very unique way because what John does is that John showcases the sun so that the sun can confirm his relationship to the father. That's it. That's another shot about right there. That, that Jesus shows up in John's gospel for the very purpose of letting everybody that he encounters know that you can, watch this, you cannot claim to know my father, but reject me. Because the father and I are working together in solidarity. That you cannot claim the love of my father that you cannot see and not receive me, the man that's standing right in front of you. They go, that's why God also says you can't claim to love the God you can't see and not love the brother and sister that's standing right in front of you or sitting right next to you. Yeah. Yeah. So John's gospel, it, it introduces us to a son with signs. But the danger is you can miss the son looking at the sign. The sign was designed to point them to the Son. And the Son came to reveal to them that he, though subordinate in obedience, was equal in power. Now I said something there, you are a saved man better than you are. I said the Son came in obedience, being subordinate to the Father, but he was yet equal in power. That's why he could tell a man, get up and take your man. Because he was subordinate and obedient to the mission that his father sent him on, but he had all the power. He was human, yet divine. He, he, he at the same time, simultaneously, was a man. And he was God in the flesh. And so, Jesus in John's gospel, he does things like tell the man, you got to be born again. <laughs> you remember Nicodemus, don't you? John 3, he told him, uh, you must be born again. And Nicodemus is puzzled. He's a very erudite and intelligent brother. He's, he's, he's learned from a very young age about the, the things of God and the law and all of those things. He knew the Bible backwards and forwards. But he didn't recognize the Son of God was standing right in front of him. Yeah, yeah. Jesus told him, you've got to be born again. He said, well, how is a grown man supposed to be born again when he's already been born and grown up? He said, don't you know? With all of your knowledge and understanding and with all of your regalia and your titles and, and, your, and your outfit, Nicodemus, you don't understand what I'm telling you? That I'm not talking about what happens in your mother's womb. I'm talking about the new birth. That you've got to die to your sin. And the only way you can do that and live is put faith in me. That your baptism is a baptism that acknowledges that you must die to the sins of the world, die to your way of living, die to every presupposition, preoccupation, and assumption that you have about God, and live by believing in me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Come on and help me, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Nick Demas, you got to believe in me. And if you believe in me, then you are, in fact, born again. He told the woman, give me a drink 
the water. <laughs> Not because there was anything unique about the cup of water, but he wanted to show her to point back to himself by letting her know, you give me this water, but I want you to understand the same way this physical water can quench your physical thirst. I've got a living water that flows from a source that you cannot get from the ground. I've got living water that has everlasting vitality. It's got eternal power that you can live not only on this side, but in heaven forever if you drink of my water. So he was showcasing his identity as the son of God. And so he approaches this man in our text. In this context, there was a uh, an area, as you heard in scripture, there were five uh, covered colonnades or porches that, that surrounded this, this area of pools. There was a big pool, some scholars believe it was two spaces separated where there were four porches surrounding and one in the middle, but either way, you had a pool, you had a space with water in it, and you had these, these porches, almost like if, if you, uh, let me uh, bust somebody's butt real quick, if you go to the, to the Golden Nugget, <laughs> what you'll see, and you don't have to act like you this, it's not a sin to go to the Golden Nugget, you got landers in the golden nugget. You got soft rags in the golden nugget. I know your cooking is great, but I'm just saying, if you, you decide you want a steak and you don't want to have to be laboring in the kitchen today, go to the golden nugget. <laughs> just saying. But they have out in the pool area, and I'm not ashamed. My family and I have been out in the pool. We've enjoyed ourselves in plain sight. We've been hiding in plain sight. We don't even have to leave town. We can do what we call a staycation. Check in to go to another and go swimming right there in the pool. But out there, you have what they call cabanas that are covered. And then you also have some open platforms that are out in the middle of the pool. So whether you want to sit in the open uh, uh, cabana area or you have the covered cabanas, that's what you can put in your mind to that it gives you a resemblance of what the pool in the Bible looked like. It was a big pool and you had these enclosed cabanas on one side so that the lame, the paralyzed, the blind could lay there, be covered from the elements of the atmosphere, but also from time to time, the Bible says, evidently, there was a phenomenon that kept all of them there so that when the waters were troubled or stirred, somebody would experience their healing. Good illustration. Good. And whether you believe that or not is not the point today. The point is, this man was there 38 years. And Jesus walked up to him and began a conversation. And this man does something amazing because when Jesus approaches him, he says to the man, once he sees him lying there and he learned he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? That's, a, that's an amazing question. I tell you all the time, whenever you hear God or Jesus represented uh, the Father in heaven, whenever you hear the Lord ask a question, that ought, to, that ought to put your spiritual antenna up. Because he doesn't not know anything. In other words, he's omniscient. Jesus has full knowledge of every thought in our mind and every hair on our head. So he did not need to ask the man for his own information. So why did he ask? Because he wanted to hear the man's response. Because notice how the man responded. The man answered a question that Jesus did not answer. Did not ask. I'm going to run that by you one more time. The man answered a question Jesus did not ask. What was the question? Do you want to be made well? Yeah. What was the answer? Well, sir, he was respectful. Yeah. But you understand, you can be respectful and polite yeah, yeah, yeah. and still miss the point. Right. 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 Some of us think, I'm just sliding this 
is in, because the Spirit gets in. Some of us think that if we're respectful, cordial, credential, polite, calm, refined, that that in and of itself is going to count for anything when it's time to stand before God. I wish you'd help me right here. I'm, I'm, I'm only going to pitch for 10, 30 more seconds here, but I need to, I need to just slide this in. Uh, don't, don't think that coming to church in that suit is doing anything to add any equity in heaven for you. Because God does not need us. He, he wants us in connection to him. He wants his children to, ex to experience eternal bliss with him. But he does not need us. We said last week that he's got angels in heaven right now that are rendering and offering him praise. And they don't even celebrate redemption. They don't even have sins that they've been redeemed from. And yet they pray. So God doesn't need our worship and praise, but he desires it, and he desires to have us in connection to him. And so, we're not doing God favors by getting all dressed up. No, we're honoring God by putting our best foot forward. So that means, I don't care if you have a suit or a jumpsuit. Come to church. Give your hand to God. Because at the sunlight, it matters less what you walk in with compared to how you walk out after it's over. Because God can take care of your outfit. He can give you a new job and give you more money and more resources and more exposure and a different circle of friends. He can improve your status and your station in life. But do you have a heart that's open and a mind that's open and a spirit that's humble and ready to receive? And does the sunlight have the kind of collective spirit that we can receive those who need Jesus? See how I flip that background? It's not only somebody else that needs Jesus, but it's us that already know him that must be welcoming to those that need him. And so, man says, sir, I don't have anybody else. Yeah. The water's stirred. Yeah. I'm trying to get in. Yeah. And it never fails. Somebody else goes down ahead of me. Yeah. Now right there, I need to pause. Because what you need to understand is that if you and I are going to get well soon, not just from COVID, but from the affliction of your spirit. Some of us, watch this, have not been afflicted by the sickness of COVID, but are stuck in stagnation. Because, and we're not being judgmental, we're just being upfront today. We spent, I was talking to my dad about this uh, a few weeks ago that the world has had to relearn how to engage with one another. Not that we forgot because like riding a bike once you learn, you don't forget. But if you haven't done it in 20 years you might be a little wobbly the first time you get back on. Because it's been a while. And sisters and brothers it's been a while since we've been able to do everything we were doing before 2020 came. And here's what has happened to some of us. Maybe none of you, but some of your family and friends. Stagnated, yeah. Stagnation. Yeah. Complacency. We justify, and I'm going to say it, I might get troubled by some folk, but I love you anyhow. We will justify not doing the things of the Lord and, and then go, go to work on tomorrow and put ourselves in the same risk that we put ourselves in coming out of the church. But we'll justify it by saying, I'm going to stay home on Sunday. 
Sunday because I'm already gone Monday through Friday. See what I'm talking about? Stagnation. Complacency. We're going to wear a mask. We're going to check chips. If you have a fever, stay home. And if it gets too bad, we're going to stay home. We've done it before. If it gets so bad that it really is not worth coming into the sanctuary together, then we won't. But don't walk that slippery slope. Don't justify not spending time with God. Because you've already spent so much time doing everything else for everybody else. When God is the one that gave you the job you're going to. You do remember that when that hurricane came, that, that it was the Lord's strength and the Lord's power that fed us and kept us and encouraged us and protected us and directed us and sustained us and strengthened us and led us and fed us and equipped us and lifted us and encouraged us and revitalized That's not what I asked you, sir. That's not what Jesus 
Jesus says, we ask him. He said, do you want what I have? I got it for you, but do you want it? Or are you comfortable and content with lying on this mat? Because see, what happens is after 38 years, doing the same thing, over and over, after two and a half years of being at home, watching it on the internet, It did not say he 
He said he was cured. And notice what happens. He picked up his mat and walked. Later on, Jesus found him in the temple and said, see, you're well again, at least physically, but stop sinning or something worse may happen. And the man went away and simply told the Jewish leaders it was Jesus who made him well. He walked away cured. But based on context, most scholars do not believe he was saved. Because Jesus references, you keep on going down this path. I see, I gave you strength in your legs. You're walking around, but are you walking with me? Or are you now simply going back to doing whatever you want to do, even though now you have strength to do it? First you were complacent. Now you care for you. Mm. Relationship. Here's the danger. You can be blessed by God and not have a relationship with Him. You can be the recipient of God's favor. God can use the church to bless your life, bless your family. God can use the people of God to pray for you and encourage you. But if you don't come to faith in Christ for yourself, then you are cured. Your life has improved, but your life has not been saved yet. Which is why you got to recognize the blessing of relationship. Because here's, here's the danger. You don't want to be blessed by God. Yet be isolated, distant from him. You don't want to have lip service, but no evidence in your life. You don't want to have your heart far from him. Because not only did the text suggest that the man walked away without salvation, though his life had been improved. But the text also showcases that while this man was offered eternal salvation, but was content with temporary improvement. That there was another group that also gives us a warning of what not to do. Because the text says that when he left, Jewish leaders said to the man, it's the Sabbath. And the law says, I'm done. You cannot carry your man. Jewish law stated there were certain things you could not do on the Sabbath. One of them was you could not walk around. You could not participate in anything that resembled labor. That was a day of rest. So this man who walked around carrying his mat was an indication that either he was ignorant of the law or ignoring the law. Jewish leaders said, you cannot do that. You are forbidden from walking around with that man. Now listen to how absurd that is. <laughs> the man, Dick and Woodard, that they were used to seeing as an invalid laying on the porch with no strength in his legs is walking around and the only doggone thing they have to say is that the law says you should be carrying your mat. What about the legs that he's walking with? It went straight to the law and didn't notice his limbs. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have Some mercy. of us. Have mercy. Not careful. We can miss miracles. Because we are preoccupied with somebody's inability to follow a rule. Wish you help me there. Don't miss the miracles of God in 2022. Because you're so concentrated and preoccupied and consumed by fault finding and making sure that the letter of the law has been followed. We are made righteous. We do not earn righteousness. We do not merit it. We do 
not live lives so good that, that we earn it. Boy, I'm, I'm done. But, but these leaders were blinded to the miracle that Jesus performed of healing this man. And all they had to say was, you should be walking around carrying that man <laughs> on the Sabbath. <laughs> so, not only did the man lose out on his opportunity for salvation, but these leaders were forfeiting and squandering their opportunity for salvation. Because they saw his mat and missed the miracle. What mats are you fixated on? That have you missing the miracles of God? What what fault, faults and failures and flaws and imperfections in people's lives are you fixated on? That has you missing out on the fact that God has brought them out from whatever they were stuck in. You see, when you come out of something, to Scully, I've learned you might be a little dirty, you might be a little shabby, you might, you might look a little ruffled after you've been through something. But, but if you're only fixated, Mrs. Lloyd, on what you look like, but don't remember that the God that brought you out deserves praise. Because see, some of our situations are messy. You don't have to look at me like you don't understand what I'm talking about. You, I, pastors have some messy situations. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All have sin.
to sin another way. Come on, help me close. The Bible says that he was slain from the foundation of the world. And the Bible says that when Jesus Christ showed up, that he healed people over here and delivered people over there and, 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 and redirected people over here. But then it came time for him to head to the same place that the sheep had to head when he went to the sheep gate. Because he was obligated for sacrifice. And on Calvary's cross, we see our Savior offering himself as a sacrifice. And it was his blood, like the blood of the Lamb, that covered us and has cleansed us. And if you're not careful, you'll come to church and you'll forget that it was the blood. But I've got a question for somebody. Do you know that it was the blood? I'm going to ask you one more time. Does anybody over here know that it was the blood? That it wasn't your degree? That it wasn't your looks? That it wasn't your money? But you can sing and testify, I know it was the blood. Anybody in the middle that knows it was the blood? It wasn't your hairdo. It wasn't your bank account. It wasn't your resume. Because you know it was the blood. Anybody over here that knows it wasn't the car you drive. It wasn't that house you live in. It wasn't that suit you have on. But it was the blood. Anybody behind me and above me know that it wasn't your hair color. And it wasn't your skin color. Hold on. It wasn't, it wasn't how much you had. Hold on. It wasn't where you had it, but it was the blood. Anybody know it was the blood? Then you can help me close today. Because if you know that it was the blood. I said, because if you know that it was the blood, then you ought not sit there and act like you don't know that it was the blood. Because if you know that it was the blood, follow me, then you know that he's worthy of all praise. And do I have anybody in here that does not mind giving God praise? And you don't mind waving your hands. And you don't mind clapping your hands because you know, like I know, that it was the blood. I said, you know, like I know, that it was the blood. Anybody know it? Anybody glad? Anybody happy? Anybody grateful? Do you love him? Do you praise him? Will you worship him? Can you say yes?
We thank you, God, for your power to keep her, your power to hold them up. Please strengthen, comfort, and keep. This is our prayer, that they would have the joy of the Lord one day, even after they have endured this season of mourning. Thank you for the blessing of that life. Thank you for all the lives that were touched by Kennedy. Bless the family. Keep this grandmother and her family. This is our earnest prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. And we believe in the power of that name. Power to heal. Power to hold her up. We believe you will keep her. You will sustain her. You will strengthen her. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Mrs. Jackson, keep her in your prayers and keep your family in prayer. Thank you, leaders. Thank you all. Amen. Amen. We thank God for her faith. Thank God for her faith and for that family support to you. Amen. We do want to I'll be prayerful that service, the homegoing service for uh, Kennedy will be Saturday the 5th of February at 11 o'clock at the Greater Mount Gideon Baptist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So again, Saturday the 5th of February, that's coming up. It's coming Saturday at 11 o'clock, Greater Mount Gideon in Baton Rouge. So we, we thank God for the family and their faith and we ask that you pray with them. Uh, as they go forward, trusting in God in a difficult time. Uh, we have a couple things we'll announce and we'll get you out of here. Uh, we want to uh, acknowledge, I got word that uh, our own Reverend Washington, to my left and your right over there, is celebrating uh, 30 years of life and a few more. No, God's been good to him. 70 years of life is nothing to see that. We salute him, celebrate that. Amen. Reverend Washington, amen, amen. We thank God for that. Every day is a good day. Uh, every day is a day that the Lord has made, we should say. And we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. When we're blessed beyond measure, we, we, we thank God for, for that testimony of how God can keep us and we're grateful. Uh, a couple of quick things, and we will let you go. Of course, we're going to give as we go. So make sure that you uh, put your tithes and offerings uh, in uh, the uh, containers that the ushers have, and you can give as you go. Also tomorrow, a few things, 6 o'clock tomorrow is our quarterly church business meeting. 6 p.m. again tomorrow, we'll be right here for the church business meeting. Also, next Sunday, we announce Unleashed, the new sermon and Bible study series that we launch on next Sunday, the first Sunday of February, it will be Super Bowl Sunday, and it will be the first Sunday of the month that we launch a new series. Both the sermons and the Bible studies will coincide. They will both be uh, dealing with what it means to unleash the power of faith and love and sacrifice in the kingdom of God. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm excited about it. And TNT, or our Truth and Transformation, will be available not only in person, but for those who for health concerns and other reasons cannot come, we're going to make that available via Zoom as well as our lifeline. So we'll be here uh, this coming, uh, we'll be here uh, for this Wednesday at uh, 6.30 for that, and then we'll be back next Sunday for the beginning of the sermon series as well. I don't know about you, but I had such a great time praying every morning of the week this month. Amen. That I'm not going to stop. Every day of the week at 645, prayer partners will, will proceed for the rest of the year. Monday through Friday, 645. On Wednesdays, we have our weekly rotation where some of our leaders take turns and they lead that. I want them to continue to do that. I'm just asking that you all would do it at 645. It's worked so well, I feel like we found the sweet spot in this prayer partners initiative. And so I want to keep it going. So Monday through Friday, 6.45 a.m. on the Lifeline. And then every Wednesday will be whatever the designated uh, leader is for that week. Please be prepared to do that. 
And then we'll, we'll start to mix in some other persons as well. This will give us an opportunity for those of you who are serious about your prayer life and your church uh, life to get involved in undergirding the church with power. And I, I, I'm telling you, when we undergird everything we do in prayer, when we saturate it with prayer, God has amazing things that he can can bring about in our presence. And so, uh, up close and personal was great. We extended the fast for the whole month. Today's the final day. And uh, I thank God for each and one of you who's been committed to that all month in whatever way you fasted and prayed. We continue with prayer in the morning, 645. And then, on Sunday mornings, from now on, starting next Sunday, I'll be on the lifeline every Sunday morning at 745, just for that first 10 minutes or so. Uh, and we'll be out, and then we'll be prepared for worship at 11. Uh, finally, uh, if you would, uh, evaluation, I mean, the uh, Church Anniversary Committee. We thank God for everything you all did. We had a phenomenal 125th Church Anniversary, and so we want to have a quick uh, discussion uh, and chat on this Wednesday at 6 o'clock prior to Bible study, so be here at 6. Those who can, if you can't, Again, we'll make that available via Zoom and Lifeline as well. All of our committee members for the church anniversary that was brilliantly led by Deacon and Mrs. Uh, Harrison Franklin. We thank God for them. Uh, we had an overwhelming, great month of activities, and I'm grateful for your contribution to that process. But we do want to take some time, look at the survey, and discuss that, and know that we're going to make sure we email that survey to everybody so it can be available, and we'll print out copies so that you want to see the evaluation, you can have the honest, uh, anonymous assessments that have been provided for our church from our membership. And then, of course, if you have um, 2021 uh, contribution statements that you would like a copy of, please come by the office, and Ms. Toy Sterling will make sure that you get that. And, of course, tithes and, and tithing and offering envelopes for 2022, we also have those available uh, during office hours as well. Well, we've had a great day. I want to, amen. Chairman, we've had a great day. We want to make sure that you get everything you need for information. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you for that, Chairman. We want to make sure that we do something very important. Uh, and I want to make sure, again, that you understand. Uh, follow me as I, as I follow Christ and uh, understand that we are off to a great start. We've got some exciting uh, things in store. Um, there's, there's just there's, there's too many to discuss right now but in terms of opportunities that our church will have to make an impact in our community and to make an impact within. So that's what we're seeking to do, to impact our own membership in ways that we have not before and also impact beyond the walls of our membership as well. We do want to do this finally, uh, and that is we do want to have an official prayer of installation. And so all those who serve as officers for this year. You have been elected to serve, you have been uh, designated, you have committed yourself. Would you now come forward? Will we do that? Could you well, at least stand where you are, actually? We're just gonna stand, we're not gonna come forward. If you all would stand wherever you are, and I'm gonna pray for you right here. We have some up top, amen, and we have some down here, and even behind, amen. We're gonna pray a prayer of installation so that you uh, can be blessed in your service, Amen. We thank God for his word. And there's a verse in Colossians uh, that I do want to read. And uh, this is, um, I think, very pivotal and important uh, to us because it speaks to uh, what it is that we do here in the church. And this is uh, Colossians chapter 3. Uh, starting with verse 15, I'm going to read through 17. Listen to what this says. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. The peace of Christ. That means when we serve and lead, hostility, contention, fighting, and animosity should not take up residence in the Lord's church. Verse 16 says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Notice, when we worship and praise, the Spirit of God must be again guiding and governing 
our time. And finally, verse 17, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God for the Father through Him. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you. And we ask now that you would anoint, favor, bless, equip, and enable these your servant leaders that they might serve and lead with great integrity, with great success, and with great spirits that they would have a standard of excellence, that they might make their contribution to the well-being and wellness of our congregation. We thank you for their selection by you, for their election among us. We thank you for their commitment to serve and to lead. Bless their efforts. Let it bless our ministries. Let it bless our church. This is our earnest prayer. And we look forward with great expectations, great anticipation for the wonderful things you will accomplish in and through them in order to bless us. We thank you for that. Oh God, thank you for these leaders. Bless them in a special way. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us all stand. Let us all stand for the benediction. Look this way. May God be with you. May his peace, may his comfort, may his strength be with you. And may his spirit rest and abide until we shall meet again. It's the name of the Son and the Savior that we ask God and thank God for Him in Jesus' name. And everybody who agrees and believes, could you sing with us all together? All of you, all of you.